Welcome to Point Blank. This is your host, Fun Mike Crypto. Today our guest is my friend Pit Pit. Pit Pit is the ultimate knife catcher. The undisputed legend king of the one minute chart. It is great to have you Pit Pit on Point Blank, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What an intro. That's, uh, that's the best intro ever. Like, <laughs> I like it. Uh, <laughs> thank you, appreciate it. Um, I'm here, hit me with questions. Let's get it going, man. Tell us a bit about yourself. Who is BitBit? Uh, so who is BitBit? Uh, I mean, it's an avatar. I mean, it's an avatar. It's a Twitter character I created uh, uh, in the beginning of 2017. I was active on Twitter way before uh, with a different account, but um, which I'm not using anymore because it was doxxed. And I decided to stay uh, anon uh, since the uh, beginning of 2017 because I saw that I'm it's catching a lot of uh, traction again and you know? um, i mean i started the uh, crypto in 2013 and uh, since then i was uh, following all these OGs, you know uh, and after 20 uh, uh <clears throat> 2017 like after this uh, there was like this uh, uh bit of an alt season that started i, I decided i saw it coming and uh, from what I've learned in the past, from what I saw in 2014, um, there is this cycle that everybody comes and eventually end up in Twitter uh, for crypto, for news and uh, info and stuff like that. So I said, uh, okay, why not just open a new one, a fresh one? Um, and I created BitBit. That, that was the only bit something that was left. So, uh, I said, all right, why not bit bit? And, 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 and it's there. I mean, since then, it's bit bit. And I like it. I, with time, I, I, I get to like it more. People are getting used to it. It's kind of weird, though, no? <laughs> it, it's catchy. Bit? Yeah, it's catchy. It's good. I like it. You say it's you got like docs on your first account? How did I mean, that I happen? was always docs. So it was me, right? Uh, that, that ah, you, you docs yourself. Yeah, it was my personal account. And... Uh, and uh, when I was, uh, <clears throat> since I started with crypto, I would ask questions with my personal account. Uh, it was just my name. It was me. And um, I mean, I didn't, I didn't dox myself. It was just the default. I would just put my name. At 2017, I decided to open one that will be unknown just for crypto and uh, no other uh, other things you know like other use for crypto for for twitter just crypto and since then it's bit bit not my name not uh, the name that i told you before so what does bit bit do outside crypto what are your hobbies um i have many hobbies i mean um, from sports i, I like soccer i like uh, like running um i mean what I do other than uh, than trading is take care of my children. I have four children. Uh, I have a, a family uh, that uh, I love very much and I take care of. And I have, um, I mean, I don't trade only crypto, right? Uh, I also, I mean, I, I'm, I'm trading since 2007. And uh, I trade futures uh, for a living. That's what I do until today. <clears throat> and um, I mean, uh, just uh, that's that's uh, that crypto thing is just uh, uh, something that uh, evolved with, with time, right? It started in 2013 uh, with uh, mining rigs and stuff like that, and uh, it evolved, and uh, I became just a, tra a trader. Uh, I didn't do any mining since uh, end of 2014. So, uh, and I'm trading crypto. Um, and that's an addition, addition to uh, my job, my uh, real, uh, real life uh, job. Uh, this is how I uh, make a living. Um, so you've been professionally trading since 2007 on since, legacy markets? Since 2007, I'm trading, yes, I'm trading traditional markets. Uh, it's 99% uh, in futures, all kinds of products. Uh, and uh, not only in, uh, I mean, in the States, it's uh, Canada and uh, in Europe, uh, like DAX and others. Uh, I also trade uh, commodities. Um, okay, so in addition to all of that, uh, we have um, 
we have a trading room, uh, something that we started a, uh, almost a year ago um, in our trading room in the fir the firm um, started a, a crypto arm, which I take care of. And uh, now we have traders and um, it's in pro I mean, uh, our, our progress is, uh, is uh, doing uh, pretty good. Uh, we're very happy with the results and uh, we grow with, I mean, uh, with, uh, we grow together with the market also. I mean, uh, the market is growing and the market is, uh, is booming lately. So uh, obviously we grow and uh, we're always hiring. I mean, traders. Do you hire guys from crypto Twitter? We do <laughs> hire guys from crypto Twitter, yes. Uh, what about people from the Casonomics group? Yeah, the Kaz Army. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they were after me for some time because I don't know. I, he he started something against me for no reason. I never inter interacted with him. I don't know why. And then uh, I got a bunch of uh, uh, all kinds of haters all of a sudden. I mean, I'm, I hate no one. I have no problem with anyone. I'm here mostly to have fun. Uh, I mean, in crypto Twitter, when I say I'm here, I'm here mostly to have fun and interact and uh, with friends. And uh, I mean, uh, uh, not trying to fight anyone. Uh, I mean, in general, in life, I'm not someone who looks for uh, any fights or anything like that. So some people do, it makes them happy. Uh, that's not me. Uh, that's not me. Uh, anyway, so so yeah, we don't have any cars, anyone from Kaz Army in the in the shop. Um, but we do have guys from Crypto Twitter. Uh, um, they're very very good. Uh, we're happy with them. And uh, I mean that's that's uh, that's about uh, that part. Uh, on this, uh, I mean. I'm not going to extend. It's uh, it's uh, not only my uh, my firm. Uh, it's something a bit bigger than just me. So um, if you want to know about that more about this uh, this part in my life, you'd have to join the team. Nice. Where do I apply? Uh, Although I don't do one minute charts. <laughs> okay. So no, I get it. <laughs> hey, Bitbit. So can you walk us through your go-to trading strategy and style? Like uh, this, my go-to this Dijon okay. style of one minute chart evolved yeah, from, so, so people from look your at professional my one life. Chart. If, if I could, I mean, I mean, saying you trade off the one minute chart, I don't trade off the chart at all. Okay. But from the, on the one minute chart, I get most details that, that the market, uh, I mean, not most, if I could trade off the one second chart, if there was uh, enough activity on the one second, I would look at the one second chart, right? I want to know what happens in the market in real time. I'm a scalper. I can trade uh, within within a five second, in and out. Uh, that's what I do. That's how I make a living. That's what I do in futures, and that's I mean in futures it's it's even a little more to the extreme. That there are some say that there are some trades that have uh, been taking place within a second, in and out. Um, but that's what I do. This is my style. Uh, this is how I trade, and uh, I survived uh, for for. Uh, more than 10 years uh, uh, trading this style. And um, I mean, my approach to the market is mainly um, not to try and be the guy who predicts where the market is going. I'm there um, to take advantage of the reaction of the market after something that might will happen, happen. Okay, so I'll give you an example. Uh, if the market is trading right now at 12K, okay, this approach mostly is not for, uh, uh, this approach is not for Bitcoin mostly, okay, but that's in general, okay, this is how I look at the markets. Um, I'd look at the market right now, I'd see a resistance and I'd try to understand and to uh, predict, okay, try to work my odds against uh, error correction, okay? Uh, that uh, will happen, that will occur in the market if we hit that resistance, okay? And I'll try to, I'll try to take advantage on this correction, okay? So for example, if we have a move to 12K right now, I'd say, okay, uh, there is a good chance, okay, that if we hit the, that 12K, 
there will be a retracement for uh, $50, okay? So I go, I throw a million dollars on the 12K and I'll buy them back on 50, uh, uh, on 1950, and 11, 950. Uh, but this is just an example. Don't do it. Don't try this at home. You're not trained enough to do it. So uh, that was just a, a, a a big example for for uh, how do I, I i approach my my uh, how do i approach uh, but that's just just uh, an, an example for one scenario in different scenarios i mean most people who'd look at me would say that i'm a moment, momentum trader okay i'd look for a momentum and i'll try uh, to ride the momentum most cases in many cases in many other cases i'll try to see what would stop the momentum, where, where this momentum would stop. Uh, I mean, uh, there was a good example, let's say on uh, last, uh, last Friday, you had a good example. The market was, uh, was sliding down, uh, and I think from 11.8, uh, sorry, Justin. <clears throat> so there was a, a good slide from 11.8 all the way to 11.350. Uh, yeah, and I was, I mean, I started to buy around 11,500, but I bought very small. I mean, when I say small, it's like a 5% of my usual size. And um, there was a good slide. Uh, and there was a little bounce. There was a little bounce uh, from uh, 11,350, 11,380, all the way to 1,400. But someone, something happened around the 11,400, not 14, 11,400. Something happened in the, on the, on the 11,400 area. Uh, there was a big buyer that showed up. Someone just lifted the market with 7 million. So a lot of people got cut on the short side. Uh, that uh, obviously broke the momentum, broke the, 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 the bearish momentum that was in the market at that time. And uh, there was a very, very easy... Uh, if if you're a scalper, if you're just if you were, were there just for a quick scalp, there was a very uh, easy hundred bucks to make on the market. I mean, not a hundred uh, hundred dollars in your pocket. It's a hundred dollar move, right? So uh, if you're in uh, with a, a thousand Bitcoin on a trade, it's a it's a thousand by hundred. I mean, but that's just an example. Um, no one entered. I looked at the market, so don't uh, don't try to look for it. Uh, but uh, some some traders catched a million, and and some traders catched a little bit more than a million, uh, around the eleven four hundred, and that was uh, that was the area, uh, the actually uh, the actual good area to buy and enter the market on the long side if you wanted to, uh, um, I mean, uh, to try for a, and look for a momentum breaker. That was a good example, and if you look at the chart. Uh, it looks like a good bounce from uh, 400 all of a sudden. It's a bounce that happened from nowhere, right? Because the market kept on sliding down. Everybody was looking uh, south, okay? Everybody was, I mean, most traders that uh, were around me and uh, I mean, I saw even on Twitter, uh, we're looking at around the 11K, 11,100. Some were uh, looking at even below at uh, 10K, 800 um, with bids. They're waiting there with bids to see if there would be a big dip, uh, try and catch that. Um, but that momentum breaker changed the whole uh, the whole sentiment uh, at that moment, and all of a sudden we started to see a rally. If you look at the chart, you're going to see a, a hundred dollar move with no retracement from uh, eleven four to eleven five or eleven twenty eleven five twenty somewhere there. Well, just an example. So that's basically my trading style. This uh, this. Uh, Momentum, uh, momentum. Uh, let's say, uh, let's call it uh, uh, right. price action trader. Yeah, kind of. Mm, I'd look. Uh, I mean, that's that's if I'm trying to uh, actually cut, take, grab a trade for uh, not uh, not a swing. Uh, I mean, Any specific indicator you use when you you trade on the uh, one minute? Specific indicators I don't use. I mean, uh, if you call funding an indicator. Uh, yeah, I use funding, uh, predictive funding. I use this, uh, but in terms of technical analysis indicators, um, if you'd ask me, I mean, some people like it, so I'm not. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you my opinion about this, but I don't. Uh, I don't use them. Okay, I don't use uh, indicators. Uh, 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 
on the chart. Uh, for me, uh, it's mostly meaning, meaningless. I mean, uh, <clears throat> meaningless for me. Okay, I see it as a waste of time. For some people, it helps. Uh, not for me. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I'd follow the. I mean, when we when we look at the bitmax, I would follow the funding, the predictive funding, see if there are some changes uh, during the day on the predictive. Obviously, um, I would follow uh, also uh, big blocks on the market, big uh, big orders on the market. If there are big orders in, uh, let's say, in um, Binance Binance futures, I would be uh, <clears throat> very. Uh, I mean, I'd follow these. Uh, obviously, OKX, the same thing, and uh, Coinbase bits bitstamp. Um, these are not really indicators. These are just. Uh, follow the raw uh, bid and offer on the book, okay? Uh, which I think is very important for a scalper. Um, for someone who plays on the big uh, on the big range, let's say uh, for a big uh, swing or investment uh, stuff like that, it, it means nothing. Because if you're investing in something, you're not looking uh, for an exit. Uh, I mean, if there is a million dollar seller on a BitMEX or Bitstamp or whatever, you, you don't care if these orders are real or not real. Uh, you're there for the investment because you believe this technology um, will change the future or will do, uh, I mean, this technology or this idea of Bitcoin have a very good chance to survive. And... Uh, I mean, this is my. I mean, this is why I am there, uh, and I believe that if Bitcoin survives, uh, it will, it will dominate in uh, in one way or another. It will dominate uh, in the financial uh, world. This is how I see it. This episode is brought to you by PrimeXBT, the exchange that makes possible to trade with leverage on legacy markets from a single Bitcoin-based account. So you're also in it not only for the money, but for the technology. Yeah, you call it technology, I'd call it the idea. Yeah, Bitcoin is not the whole concept. technology, right? This technology, Bitcoin technology. You know what? The technology is pretty primitive, right? Uh, okay, now all the Bitcoiners are going to kill me on this one. <laughs> it's, uh, look, it's, it's not... Uh, uh, it's a pretty primitive technology. Come on, they could do it better. Uh, if you're asking me, they could make it. Uh, I mean, you see these alt some altcoins that, that are not. So calm. you're not you're not a Bitcoin maximalist. Uh, I am in a way because I always stream everything that I make into Bitcoin, and I believe that Bitcoin will dominate uh, as long as it's there. Uh, it will dominate uh, over uh, this crypto world right it will be the best uh, the best uh, it will be the most uh, important coin. and as long as it is uh, going to stay the most popular coin i will always go and uh, i mean uh, uh, try to accumulate more of bitcoin rather than uh, any other coin uh, do you no have any other coins besides bitcoin yes i do i do have a lot of bags I have. What? I even have bags since 2014 that I don't touch. But what uh, bags do you have? I do. I even have black coin, man. Uh, that I do. I mean, I have some offline wallets that I said uh, no matter what, I'm not touching. And um, I mean, and some I did very, very well. Uh, take for example, I mean. Uh, I think with Dash, Dark Coin, it started back then. I did very, very well uh, on the, just by holding. And uh, with many other coins, actually, during 2017, most of my Bitcoin I made during 2017 on this uh, big, big uh, alt season. Uh, I did very, very well. And um, after that, I think uh, during 2018, I started slowly, slowly... Uh, um exchanging uh, most of most of them to uh bitcoin and um but i still have a lot of moonbags a lot of coins that are completely worthless 
and <laughs> some coins they still still have some value and um and the traditional one right the, the all the old coin like um i still have litecoin i have the very even the monero classic and all these all these friends uh, even from from since the old good old days i don't touch them um you could, my approach to crypto okay the way i started with crypto was also uh, something it was it was a surprise right um because i started with mining and i started and i bought mining rigs I, i'm not mining my mining rig i bought uh, uh mining asic uh, uh devices i think it was a butterfly lab devices that i bought for, to mine bitcoin and then i saw uh, that this SHA two hundred and fifty six uh, technology—I mean, this this thing doesn't only mine uh, Bitcoin. It could mine others. It could mine other other coins. And from there, I was exposed to other coins. And then I started to mine. There was one day they launched a coin that's called Maza coin. I don't know if you remember that coin. There was one day they 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 launched this coin, and the first day I started mining it. And since then, I mean, that day, I made a lot of Bitcoin just for mining this, this, I don't know, stupid coin. And uh, I sold everything on Mintpad. And from there, I became, I'm not a whale, but I mean, what's a whale? Um, I did well. I did well. And from there, I'm, uh, since then, I'm, 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 I'm trading crypto. Since then, I'm trading crypto. So, with sites. out of the new coins that... Did a Nikon 2017, 2018? Do you have any of those, or you use trade and hold basically the old legacy crypto currencies? No, no, I do. I do trade. I do have. Yeah, I have some Uniswap coins. I have tendies, man. But I'm not you have in the tendies. Top yeah, yeah, I do. Of course, <laughs> I bought tendies. Uh, you have Tesos. You have Link. You have Ethereum. You have Monero. Of course. of course. I have all of them. All of them. All of them. Um, Monero, I don't have much. I have more. Um, I have more link uh, than uh, Monero. Uh, for example, there are some coins that um, are moving very slow. Okay. And I get a feeling uh, that you're like Mojo that has like a hundreds and hundreds of coins. I used to. When Win Mintpal was still alive, yes, I did have hundreds. <laughs> When Minpal was still there, look, the, 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 the idea was simple. Uh, just hold all of them. Few of them are going to pump hard. They're going to pay for all the losses. Okay? So that was, it was a simple math. Uh, you didn't really need to think or research too much. Okay? Uh, but I wasn't like Mocha. Mocha is a, is a different level. He's a superstar. Right? <laughs> He's uh, something else. But um, I, I, I did something similar. I was also holding a lot of coins, different coins. Uh, some of them uh, had good, good projects that, uh, that I liked, and some of them didn't. Um, I mean, in, in, a, in a way, um, there, was, there was something not right that I did by... Uh, buying some uh, and holding because there were there were many coins that i knew that i'm buying just that i mean when when i say buying it doesn't mean i go and i buy on market i show bids and if my bids get hit uh, uh, i'd consider this as a as a let's say as a gift because I already saved money. Because if I showed bids, it means I showed bids 10% and below the market, the current market right now. So I'd consider this as a, a good entry, right? Um, and yeah, and when I bought, just a second, sorry about that. Yeah, you have open positions? I'm sorry? You have open positions? 
I just closed. No, there was something small. Something small. Um, you know what I'm watching now? I'm watching uh, Polonix uh, market. Tendis Polonix market is so empty, man. It's so empty. <laughs> Polonix, they listed Tendis. They listed when? They listed it uh, uh, a week ago when they announced the competition. Oh, they were getting listed on a few exchanges, not delisted. No, not delisted. Was getting listed. Ah, got getting listed. listed. Oh, it nice. Got listed a week and a half ago, I think, on Polanix. What has been your biggest lesson since you started trading in 2007? The way I approach the market is um, in most of the time, okay, since, uh, I mean, since I started working in this firm, they, tra they trained us uh, to learn how to take losses first and then how to make money. This is uh, one lesson. But I think the biggest lesson also that they, they that I've learned and I practice the most is to let the market come to me not to go and try to approach and chase the market. And if I missed something, I just missed it, it happened. There are plenty of markets out there that I can try and take advantage of. And um, I never FOMO. So, um, and I'm trained this way. Uh, I mean, this is how I survived, I guess. And uh, I'd rather let the market come to me than me going and, and uh, going and, and actually forcing myself or trying to get into a position and somewhere where I'm, I'm not in control. And if the market come to my, uh, uh, let's say my spot, if I'm trying to buy in $10 and not in, the, okay, I'm looking at link and I'm throwing numbers. And, uh, and if I look at link right now, um, okay, the link marinas go, are going to attack me now. But uh, <laughs> looking at Link right now, uh, if I was like, let's say, a, a long-term investor, I'd say, okay, I have better chances to buy it at $10 and make money rather than, I mean, make money in the future sometime, uh, rather than buying it here at $12.50 and uh, probably let the market go against me a bit before I'd start making money. Right. So this is how I'm going to look at the market, even in trading. Yes. This is how I look at the market, uh, not only in, in terms of investing, in terms of uh, uh, approach, general approach. Okay, I'd let the market come to me, uh, to a spot, to a, a, an area where I feel comfortable and, and in full control. Have you changed any of your trading style or behavior from back when you started? Aside from what uh, you just mentioned? Yes. Yes, a lot been changed and it has a lot to do also with the markets uh, in general. It has a lot to do with the markets, uh, let's say how the markets are going. Uh, now you'd see me trade a lot of futures, all kinds of them, I mean in crypto, all kinds of altcoins, almost all of them. Back then, uh, it wasn't there, right? So I'd hold less coins and I'll trade more on futures. I'll make more Bitcoin or USDT, then I'll exchange my USDT to Bitcoin. But I will hold less on coins. So I'd be more busy uh, actually trading futures. That's why I noticed in the last, uh, last, uh, last month, months it's it's been like this for months uh, that on this season the recent uh, altcoin season um, i don't hold bags okay and uh, my orders let's say for many coins are already on the market for spot markets right they're already in on the market for uh, since a, a long time ago and i mean uh, my my link bag only now I, uh, only today i noticed that i started to sell my link Okay, I, I placed it, uh, I think uh, I was 99, just 94. I, I just started to sell my link at uh, 0 0.00094 today, and then 98, then uh, 0108. I just see it, I just see my, my and these orders, they're there for a very long time. Uh, 
And when I'm saying uh, 0, 0.0, it's, uh, it's BTC, right? Uh, link BTC. When I trade uh, alts, uh, uh, spot alts, I trade them against Bitcoin, not against USD, USDT. When I trade futures, I trade uh, futures in USDT. Right? Uh, and then this, this is what these markets are uh, giving right now. These exchanges offer right now. So you mentioned that you had some tendies. So have you deep dive in the Uniswap craze? Do you have any other Uniswap coins? I think that I catch some. To be honest, I didn't put a lot of attention, I mean, a lot of my time on this because I was very busy with these uh, futures, uh, with, uh, with the altcoins, right? So I didn't really put a lot of my effort and time on the, on the Uniswaps. I mostly have tendies. Because uh, and I catched it very uh, not in the early days in the in the first days, but I catched it when it it started to retrace towards uh, the thirty forty cents again. Uh, there are hot bids, I mean hot bids. <laughs> I just clicked like crazy, uh, and I and I was praying for the transaction to go through, and I managed to catch uh, some around the forty cents and even below. Um, I mean, and since then I'm. I'm, I'm trading it a little bit. I'm buying here, selling uh, when it goes. Uh, I mean, now I don't have as much as I used to have, to be honest. And uh, I'm scared it's going to pump and I don't have my whole bag. That, that's my main issue with tendies right now. But I still have, I mean, I still have, uh, if we go to $10, I'll be happy with selling it. So changing a bit of subjects, bit, bit. Bitcoin and SPX correlation. Do you think that crypto will follow SPX if it crashes? Oh, definitely. No questions about it. Definitely. If uh, if there will ever be a crash uh, in the stock market, uh, which we'll see probably around the elections, right? I mean, I believe that until the election, uh, the market's going to keep on pumping like crazy. Uh, when I say the market is the stock market, I believe that's going to keep on pumping like crazy. And I have, I've been saying it for, I mean, since the coronavirus. And um, since the coronavirus, it's still here. I mean, I've been saying it since since the bottom. I believe we're gonna keep on pumping. It's not gonna stop until uh, until uh, election. Uh, but uh, the polls, let's say, if let's be realistic, okay? Stock market loves Trump. You like it or not? Stock market loves Trump. And if Trump, if uh, um, the polls, let's say. Uh, even though now they're showing that Trump is losing, uh, I, I believe that the market doesn't really believe it. It looks like the market doesn't really believe these polls. Because if Trump is losing, the market is going to take a hit, a big, big hit. Anyone that's going to come after Trump is going to try to change everything Trump did and is going to do the just exact opposite. But what I believe also is that the election in the States, they won't be clean elections. It's not going to be... To go very smooth, it would be a mess, and I believe that you won't know who is the president uh, in the first week after election. It might take some days, some weeks, until you know who is uh, who is the president, because they have this uh, all these issues, uh, mail voting and all that. And I guess Trump isn't going to. I mean, if he's gonna, if it's gonna show us if it, Trump Trump is losing, he's not uh, going to lose and take the loss very easy. Okay, he's not uh, someone who is used to uh, lose, so he's gonna fight for it even if it shows that uh, he's losing. So do you have any a, prediction for the elections? Who do you so think is gonna win? So there will be a little bit of mess. Uh, if you're asking me, I'm gonna look at the market and say that Trump is going to win the election. Because if Trump was not going to win the election, the market wouldn't be so strong as it is right now. This is how I see it. What will be your overall market forecast for next year, both for legacy and crypto? I'm bullish. bullish as I'm bullish overall. I'm bullish overall, and I'm bullish on crypto in general. I mean, I'm 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 here since 2013, and I'm still here. So there is something crazy uh, in me that says, uh, "Stay bullish and stay here and hold Bitcoin." Um, accumulate as much as you can. <laughs> that's what I, that's my main strategy uh, since then. And um, legacy markets will be bullish. And uh, the, 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 let's say the day or the week the after or in the election, let's say uh, the market is going 
we're going to see some turbulence in the market. That's what that's what I think. So, and obviously, if we see that in the the, the stock market, uh, Bitcoin will take a hit also. So, um, hold tight. It's going to be interesting. And with that thought, we end our episode. It is very cool to have Bit Bit on Point Blank. Thanks for coming on, bro. Can you tell us where we can no find you? Uh, where you can find me? You can find me on Twitter. <laughs> not not doxing. <laughs> I'm 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 on Twitter. You can always find me there. Uh, you can DM me. I usually uh, tend to help. Uh, you can ask around. Where are you gonna I open your paid group? Um, <laughs> I never had a paid group, and I think I shared the referral link maybe uh, two or three times uh, since I'm there. I try to stay away from these things. And, you know, I don't want to have anything uh, to do with uh, ethics or regulations or anything that can come uh, in between and say, hey, it was you or it was your fault or something that can link me between, uh, I don't know, uh, someone who's losing money and uh, my fault. You know? <laughs> I don't want to be there. I have enough to lose. and. Uh, That's not my role here. My role here, like I said in the beginning, is to have fun and uh, not to, uh, to sleep well at night, right? So here I am. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Until next time. Peace. Thanks. Thank you, Pamela. This episode was brought to you by Prime XBT, the exchange where you can trade without KYC on legacy markets with your Bitcoin. You can trade commodities like gold, silver, oil, even indexes and forex. Join now and get a 50% bonus on top of your deposit for trading at u.primexvt.com forward slash Panama.